to lose that it was like <laughs> it was like a shot to like I don't know if it's the ego or like like when you take things like you know you take things for granted and hey y'all welcome back to my channel as you see I'm back with another video let's get into it so today is kind of like almost a part two of my hair growth journey I will link it down below if y'all want to see like how I got to where I am as far as growing my hair out I'm gonna basically show y'all pictures of how my hair grew from when I cut it the second or third time up until now and how I'm kind of recovering from the damage that I caused on my hair and then most importantly what I changed how I'm growing my hair how I'm going about this differently because this is like a second hair journey for me because somehow ya bitch damaged her hair um, without even straightening it so you know I'm dealing with those consequences for some reason without even having straightened my hair but you know it is what it is and I'm looking forward I'm doing what I can to make my hair healthy now and I would love to share it with y'all because I want y'all to be able to make your hair healthy as well and we can all just thrive we can all just live a great healthy hair life and yes I'm wearing a shirt you just can't see but it's a tube top it's a tube top you just can't see it let me like back up okay this is a little better I just don't like looking naked it looks weird so yeah I'm gonna start off by showing off some pictures of my hair right when I cut it I cut my hair on January 10th and it's actually really funny this is a six month this is crazy doesn't really look like my hair's this is six month worth of growth but my hair's healthy so whatever six months and a week ago I cut my hair and this was basically my big chop because I never did big chop but my hair got so bad and you'll see especially if you watch my hair journey video you'll see my hair got really bad literally not from heat not from nothing like that I was just being really rough with it not keeping up with it so yeah I did have to cut a lot of my hair off because it got really broken in the back and you can kind of see in this video I'm about to show you here that you know it was really uneven really sparse really thin at the ends and it just wasn't doing the thing for me it wasn't looking cute I wasn't feeling confident and I knew something needed to be done so here are the pictures right after I got my cut my hair actually looks horrible like I'm actually really upset looking at these pictures because that is not what my hair ever looked like my hair's always been really thick and curly and all that and here you can see it's frizzy and thinning out and short and everything my hair was never and I'll kind of get into my Devika experience in a different video because I really have a lot of things to say about that. These are the pictures of the first time I styled my hair since I got my cut. And I was really excited, but it looked way better wet than it did dry for some reason. Like, it was just, I just wasn't used to it being that short. But it's like, what can you do? I refuse to straighten my hair, and I, I just had to ride it out, and I'm still riding it out. Because I don't, I mean, my hair is so much healthier, but... It's not where I want to be at all. So you can kind of see the back is still so short. That was the issue before, was that my back, the back of my hair was like thinning out like crazy. Thinning out like crazy. So it was still disappointing to see that I got my hair cut and it was still uneven. But if I did even it all the way out, I would have had to cut off a lot of hair. And I'm glad I didn't because it's growing in pretty nicely now. And I'm really excited. And one of the biggest differences that I noticed is my puff. My puff got so fucking little, like so little. And I was so mad because my puff has always been voluptuous and huge and curly and frizzy. And I always loved the puff. Or actually, I took the puff for advantage. I took the puff for granted. I took the puff for granted. And as soon as my puff thinned out, I'm like, fuck. I'm not even going to show y'all the pictures of the puff before because the puff was huge. And then the puff was little. But, like I said, one of the biggest differences is my puff now. My puff now is so much more full and I'm really happy because I can tell that I've had a lot of growth. But, oh my god, I'm backing up and you can't see my shirt still. Um, it's, you know, it's almost past my boob again so that's how I can tell it's kind of growing and I'm not stagnant. But this was my puff before and then this was my puff after growing it out so much more full so much more fluffy curly healthy thick main thing thick 
And that was the other thing that was really upsetting about this all. Because I've grown up my whole life having super thick hair. Like, everybody used to tell me how thick my hair was. I used to hate having thick hair. I used to, like, prey on the downfall of the thickness. But then once my hair thinned out and it was easier to manage, it was so upsetting. Like, And you should never see your hair as part of your identity, but it almost felt like that a little bit. Like, I was known for someone that had super thick hair. And then to get like that, to lose that, it was like, <laughs> it was like a shot to like, I don't know if it's the ego or like, like when you take things, like, Bruh. you know, you take things for granted. And oh, like it was like a bitch, appreciate your thick hair. Love that shit. So now, you know, I'm gonna love the shit out of my thick hair. I want that shit to be out here with it. So y'all saw the pictures of my, the back of my hair before, um, like after I cut it and it was pretty short, but this is the back now. And I'm really excited about this because the last time the back of my hair looked like that was freshman year. Like, that was the first time my hair really started growing out and like the back was, I had hang time. And now I just didn't have that hang time, but I'm getting it back. So I'm really excited this was a recent picture. So the most important part, what did I do different? What am I doing different in my routine? You know, what have I added? What have I taken out? And just, this is this, this is that. What, which is the most important part because if you ain't got no routine what is you doing so one major 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 deep conditioning every week i will never stop saying that i mean it doesn't have to be every week for everybody but everyone asks me how do you get your hair healthy how do you grow your hair all that deep condition especially if you have hair like me that's prone to breakage and prone to um, dryness. Deep conditioning, literally for me, like it feels like I'm resetting my hair every week. Like no matter how bad the wash and go was, no matter how brittle my hair gets, if I like deep condition the next week, it feels moisturized, the curls that were kind of limp pop back up. And it's a great experience, I recommend it. So yeah, and I will make a whole new video about the deep conditioners I use because I feel like that's very important as well to be using the right ones for your hair. And I found a few that I can always, always lean back on and I feel like I wanna share that with y'all, but I'm not gonna do it right now. Y'all just gotta wait. So that was number one, deep conditioning every week. Number two, my dumb ass just started using oil in my hair. Um, I said in a different video that I don't really use oil, I use like serums and stuff, but I didn't know that using oil in my hair when it's dry was the key. So for some reason, when I do it when my hair is wet, it kind of just, it's gone. Like it goes in my hair and nothing happens basically. And I still use it just to like give it that extra ump, just to make sure I'm adding some oil. But something that I highly recommend is putting oil in your hair right before you go to sleep and put your pineapple up because I pineapple I know everybody doesn't pineapple but when I, I go to sleep I'll get some coconut oil and I try to do this ideally I would do it every day I guess but I don't before I go to sleep I'll put oil in my hands you know scrunch that shit up and when I wake up oh my god like you, like when you first even take off the scarf like you can tell it's so moisturized and it feels so soft like just try it and try different oils too because I didn't think coconut oil worked for me but apparently it does only when my hair is dry so you just have to it's really just trial and error and then another oil that I'm sure everybody really knows about and you might not I use the black castor oil so I use the regular like lime and mango or mango and lime whatever the brand is the coconut oil version though because that shit stinks let's be real I rub that on my roots and I try to get my ends too just so they're not brittle because brittle ends leads to breakage brittle hair period leads to breakage so the goal is to just keep your hair moisturized as much as you can really I know people say like if you use too much protein in your hair and stuff it can lead to more breakage or your hair can get too soft or something ain't no such thing as too soft for my hair because my hair needs that softness if it doesn't it gets hard and brittle and it's a done bun but yeah so I guess that's like number three basically is keeping your hair moisturized so what I've been doing is between washes, I try to moisturize my hair. So I've been trying to find curl revitalizing sprays and stuff, but I haven't really found one that works that great. I'll link the Tejan one I've been using down below, but it's just a regular curl spray. It's okay. I don't see it doing anything too great for my hair, but it still feels good in my hair. So that's what I've been using. But if y'all have suggestions for curl revi revitalizing sprays, 
let me know because I really need one. Like, I'm trying to figure out how to make my wash and goes last longer. But anyway, um, the main thing though, like I just said, like how I put the oil in at night, that's something that's been helping me so much because like I said, you wake up, your hair feels different. It feels a lot softer to me. So why do you want to keep your hair moisturized? I mean, it's kind of a known thing that you should be keeping your hair moisturized, but for one, the biggest thing is breakage. Breakage, breakage, breakage. Like, if your hair breaks off, that's it. That's what happened to me. That's why I had to cut my hair. My hair broke off so much, it was just too much. But that's why I try to put the oil in as often as I can because it keeps it soft, keeps it from breaking, basically. Yeah, like, obviously, you're moisturizing when you use deep conditioner, but I guess for me, like, the biggest change has been a matter of keeping my hair moisturized in between washes because I didn't do that when... Oh my god so by putting oil in your hair between your washes that basically is just keeping your hair moisturized as much as you can like that's every day you're moisturizing every day that's the key I mean what the fuck so yeah the only things besides those three things I just try to be conscious when I'm detangling my hair not to rip my hair out and as y'all can see my hair is flourishing right now so good things good things all good things which is why I thought I should make this because I got knowledge now. I'm learning about my hair and I know a lot of girls have problems with dryness and this is very important for that. So I hope this video helped you in some way. Please, if it did, like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel. I love y'all so much. Everyone that's tuned into my channel, I see y'all. I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you.